In this tutorial, I'll cover the following topics. We'll take a quick look at the layout of the phone. Then we'll go through a series of options where you can select a ringtone, change the contrast level of the LCD screen, set up a speed dial number and live dial pad, modify how the date and time are displayed, choose a language, check the status of the phone, change the phone's password, open the phone's web user interface, restart the phone, lock and unlock the phone. The 6865 has three significant areas, an LCD screen and navigation button, programmable buttons and hard-coded buttons for the most commonly used features, and a standard dial pad. Let me start with a quick overview of the programmable and hard-coded button layout. Starting at the top are eight programmable buttons. These buttons can be programmed with the features that are most important to you. In the middle of the phone are four buttons and the navigation pad. Starting on the left is the goodbye button. The goodbye button is used to hang up on a call or exit out of a variety of menus. The hold button, the navigation pad, on the right are the transfer button and the three-way conference button. Towards the bottom of the phone, starting on the left, is the options button, which opens a series of menus where you can customize and display information about your phone the volume control buttons, and the mute button. On the right side is the callers list, which is used to access a history of incoming calls. Redial, which stores the last 100 numbers you dialed. Two hard-coded line keys with LEDs. And a hands-free button, which is used to toggle between the handset, an optional headset, and the speakerphone. Now let's take a look at the options list. This is where you can access services and options to customize your phone. I'll press the Options button to open the Options list. I will use the Navigation key to navigate, display, and modify the items in the Options list. The on-screen instructions will tell me what to press to set, save, or cancel the option I have selected. I can use the up and down arrow keys to cycle through the options. I'll press the right arrow or center navigation button to go forward and enter that menu and I'll press the left arrow to go back one menu or in some menus to cancel my choice. At any time, you can press the goodbye button to quit, exit out, and return to the main screen. When we first open the options list, the on-screen instructions tell us to use the up and down arrows to scroll through the options. The first option is call forward. Selecting this option would take me to a menu where I could forward my phone to another number. I'll configure and set up call forward in a separate tutorial. Press the down arrow to move on to the next option, Preferences. The Preferences option has the majority of sub-options. This is where I will select a ringtone, change the contrast level of the display, set up a speed dial number, select the live dial pad option, set audio, select how the time and date are displayed on the phone, and select a language. All of these sub-options are under the Preferences option. So let's go through these one at a time. Press the right arrow or center navigation button to enter preferences. Press the down arrow to see the first sub-option, tones. Let's pause for just a second and take note of where we are. We are going to go into two tone menus, ringtone and tone set. And when we are done, we will press the left arrow to back out of these menus and return right here. Then we will go on to the next sub-option. Okay, let's continue. Press the right arrow to enter tones. Press the down arrow once and you will see ringtone. Press the right arrow to enter the ringtone menu. Press the down arrow to cycle through the various ringtones. When you hear the ringtone you want to use, stop and press the right arrow to set and select that ringtone for your phone. Let's move on to the next menu by pressing the down arrow, tone set. Then press the right arrow to enter this menu. Different countries use different tone sets. A check mark indicates the current tone set. I am not going to make any changes, so I will press the left arrow to leave and go back one menu. I'll press the left arrow a second time, and now we are back at the tones sub option. Press the down arrow to see the next sub option, display. Press the right arrow to enter display, and press the down arrow to see contrast level. I will press the right arrow to enter the contrast menu, and I will use the left 
and right arrows to adjust the contrast level. When I have adjusted the contrast level to my preference, I will press the down arrow to select and save this setting. Press the down arrow to go to the next menu, Backlight. Press the right arrow to enter the Backlight menu. Here, you can turn the backlight off or you can select Auto, which automatically turns the backlight on when the phone is in use and will automatically turn off the backlight when the phone is not in use after a specific length of time. Once you have made your choice, press the right arrow to set and save your selection. I'll press the left arrow to go back to the display sub option. I'll press the down arrow to go to the next sub option, Speed Dial Edit. Press the right arrow to enter Speed Dial Edit. The on screen instructions tell me to press an SD button. SD is short for Speed Dial. The instructions are referring to the numbers on the dial pad 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0. So I have up to 10 Speed Dial numbers or dial pad buttons I can set up. I will pick a number on the dial pad that will hold and be used to dial my speed dial number. I'll select keypad number 2 and enter the telephone number I want to be stored as my speed dial number. I'll press the right arrow and select the line I want the phone to use when it dials this speed dial number. Then I'll press the right arrow to save the entry. Here's how I will dial a dial pad speed dial number. I stored my speed dial telephone number in the number 2 button on the keypad or dial pad. So to speed dial this telephone number I will press and hold the number 2 on the keypad for 3 seconds. Then the phone will speed dial the number that was stored in the speed dial edit menu on keypad button number 2. I'll press the options button and return to the speed dial submenu. Later in this tutorial, after we have gathered more information, we will open the phone's web user interface and look at the speed dial number that was stored on keypad number 2. Arrow down to Live Dial Pad and press the right arrow to enter the Live Dial Pad menu. Here, I can turn Live Dial Pad on or off. If you turn the Live Dial Pad on, your phone automatically dials out and turns the speakerphone on as soon as a keypad number or hands free button is pressed. A check mark indicates the current status. As you can see, my phone has this option turned on. I choose to leave the option on. If you make a change, press the right arrow to set and save the option. Or, if no changes are necessary, I can press the left arrow to cancel and go back one menu. Press the down arrow to go to the next sub option, Set Audio. Press the right arrow to enter the Set Audio sub option. And press the down arrow to display the first menu, Audio Mode. Then, press the right arrow to enter the Audio Mode menu. This menu defines how the hands-free button will operate. There are four choices. If you select the first choice, Speaker, when you press the hands-free speaker button, calls will toggle between the handset and the speakerphone. If you select Headset, when you press the hands-free button, calls will toggle between the handset and the headset. If you select Speaker slash Headset, all incoming calls will be sent to the speakerphone first, and when you press the hands-free button, Calls will toggle between the speakerphone, handset, and headset. And if you choose the last option, headset slash speaker, all incoming calls will be sent to the headset. And when you press the hands free button, calls will toggle between the headset, speakerphone, and handset. Once I have made my selection, I will press the right arrow to set and save that audio mode. Or I can press the left arrow to leave my current selection and back up one menu. Arrow down to the next menu. Headset Microphone Volume. If you are going to use a headset, this menu lets you select the headset microphone volume. You can choose between low, medium, or high microphone volume. Press the right arrow to set and save your choice, or press the left arrow to go back one menu. Press the down arrow to go to the next menu, DHSG. Press the right arrow to enter the menu. This menu is where you would select if you are using a DHSG headset. I will not be using a DHSG headset, so I will press the left arrow two times to go back to the Set Audio sub option. Press the down arrow to go to the next sub option, Time and Date. I'll press the right arrow and then press the down arrow to cycle through the different choices. 
There are a variety of menus to set up the time and date format. However, your telephone system should automatically take care of this for you and no modifications in this menu should be necessary. I'll press the left arrow to go back one menu. Press the down arrow to go to the next sub option, Language. Press the right arrow to enter the language menu. Press the down arrow to see the screen language menu and the right arrow to enter that menu or the down arrow to move on to the next menu, Input Language. The 6800i series has multilingual support and additional language packs are available. A check mark indicates the current language. I'll press the left arrow twice. That's all of the sub options in Preference. Press the left arrow to go back to the Preferences option. The Preferences option is where the majority of customization is made, but there are still a few options to go through. Press the down arrow to display the next option, Phone Status. I'll press the right arrow and then the down arrow to see my first choice, IP and MAC addresses. I'll press the right arrow to display the IP address my phone is using. Let's make a note of the IP address and add it to the information we are collecting that we will use when we open the phone's web user interface. Press the down arrow to see the MAC address. Press the left arrow to go back one menu. I will continue to scroll through the sub-options where you can see things like firmware and other items related to the phone's status. When I'm done, I'll press the left arrow to go back to the phone status option. I'll press the down arrow to go to the next option, Password. Press the right arrow to enter the password menu. Here, I can change the password on the phone. The password characters must be numeric and the default password is blank or no password. I'll enter the current password and press the down arrow. I'll enter the new password and press the down arrow. And I'll enter the new password a second time to confirm it and press the down arrow. If successful, I will see the message password changed. Let's make a note of the password. That gives me the three pieces of information I have been wanting before I demonstrate the phone's web user interface. I must have the IP address of the phone. I got that from the phone status option. I must have the phone's password. I got that in the password option. And I wanted some information to look at, such as the speed dial number. I entered that in the preferences speed dial edit sub option. To view the phone's web user interface, open a browser and enter the IP address in the URL field. For my phone, that was 10.70.10.49. Log in with the username, user, and the phone's password. On the left, click on Keypad Speed Dial. Notice the entry on Keypad Number 2. It's the speed dial number I stored in the Speed Dial Edit sub option. Here, I can edit the entry, add a new entry, or delete the entry. If you make any changes, be sure to click on the Save Settings button. There are other settings, but for this tutorial, I only wanted to show you how to log into the web user interface and how to check or modify your speed dial numbers. So let's return to the Options list. Press the Options list button. Press the down arrow until you see Admin menu. This is only for administrators and requires an administrator password. I will arrow down to the next option, Restart Phone, and press the right arrow to enter that option. You'll be prompted to confirm that you want to restart your phone. Pressing the left arrow will cancel and take you back one menu. Pressing the pound key will reboot the phone. I will press the left arrow to cancel and go back one menu. I'll press the down arrow to go to the next option, Phone Lock. A user or system administrator can lock a phone to prevent it from making outgoing calls. It's a security measure to keep others from using the phone or from changing how the phone is configured. 
You'll want to change and use a password other than the factory default if you plan to lock or unlock your phone. To lock the phone, I'll press the right arrow and then press the right arrow again to select yes and confirm I want to lock my phone. Notice the ringer slash message waiting indicator is lit and the LCD screen displays the message phone is locked. To unlock the phone, press the options list button and enter the phone's password. Then press the right arrow to enter and unlock the phone. That was the last option in the options list. And that completes this tutorial on the 6865 Personalize, Setup, Customize.